Hey everybody, I got a question the other day. This question really needed to be addressed and I didn't have time to address it then, but now I do. So I'm going to give this quick class, quick lesson on how it, how to do it to answer this question that I got. The question I got was how do we resist sin? How do we resist sin? Uh, and of course it was from a baby Christian and, and they didn't know what they were dealing with. They didn't know how to deal with it and they were getting beat up. All right. The only way to answer that question is to start with the Word of God. So I'm in James chapter 1. James chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 13. It says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Now, this is the playbook of the devil right here. This is the playbook. The, the devil knows that he can't beat you. The devil knows that he can't overcome you. He knows he can't overpower you. You are the church. Once you get saved, once you say these four little words, Lord Jesus, save me, he knows he can't overpower you. There's no such thing as him overpowering you. You are the church. You're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're the church. You're the church. God does not live in the third temple. God lives in you. All right, the veil was rent when Jesus was crucified. When he died on that cross, the veil to the temple was rent, and God came out of the church, out of the temple, and into the us as believers, as the body of Christ. We are the temple of God. All right, the strongest being in the universe, the guy that created everything, lives on the inside of me. All right. I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. I pray in other tongues. And Jesus gave me his name, a name that is above every name, and told me to use it as I see fit. There's no way that I'm going to be overpowered. I am the church. I'm not going to be overpowered. So he knows he can't overpower you. So what he tries to do is he tries to pull you, to twist you, to get you off into sin. And he starts with what you like. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Enticed, just catching your eye. Just that little thought. And he gets it started. It's a seed. He sows a seed and he plays to whatever your desire is, whatever your lust is. And then, when lust hath conceived... It brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Now, the thing I need you to understand as a baby Christian is that this is a process. It don't happen instantaneous. The devil cannot instantaneously get you into sin and destroy you all at once. All right, it says here that you're drawn away of your own lust and you're enticed. All right. Point blank, number one, drawn away and enticed by whatever it is that you happen to be lusting after. It could be money, it could be women, it could be power, it could be whatever, all right? It, it might be video games. There seems to be a huge addiction to video games. And I love video games, but I'm not addicted to them. Uh, uh, there, you can be addicted to anything. You can be addicted to eating. You can be addicted to, to, to sleeping. You can be addicted to anything. Uh, 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 drugs, alcohol, you can be addicted to anything. All right, whatever it is that you lust after, whatever it is that you desire, whatever it is that has the power to get your attention and get you involved in it, uh, that's, that's all he needs. All right, and then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So there's a whole long period of time in there that you can stop this. There's a whole long period of time in here. All right. Well, at first, let's, let's say at point one, you get drawn away. Well, then you can come back at any time. You can, you can repent and you can come back. All right. Everybody trips and falls. Everybody backslides. But that don't mean you stay backslid. All right. Everybody messes up, but don't, you don't stay messed up. You come back. All right. And then it says when lust is conceived... It brings forth sin. Everybody sins, but you don't stay in sin. You don't stay there. You can come back. You can come back. So you can fight this off while it's a thought. You can fight this off when it becomes an action. 
And you can fight it off after it's become an action because it says when sin is finished, it brings forth death. All right, that, that, that could be a long time. That's not instantaneous. The devil does not have the instantaneous power to overcome you. All right, at any time you can turn back to God and break this cycle, break this chain, break this, this slide into death. You can break it. It's like, it's like falling down a water slide. At any time, though, you can get off. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You don't have to go all the way to hell. At any time you can stop and get off, you can just turn around and say, No, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, save me. I repent of this. I don't want no more of this. I don't want no part of this. Now, the best time to repent is when you first have that thought. When you first have that thought. When you first have that lust thought. That's the devil. That's when the devil's the weakest and you are the strongest. That's when sin is the easiest to resist when it's small. Because as it grows and it gets stronger and it gets stronger, it'll pull you in and it gets harder to resist. All right, the easiest time to resist is when it's its smallest and its weakest. Now, I'll give you a little bit of education here on sin and how sin works in you. How do you do it? How do you do it? All right, all of this, all this word is nothing if you don't know how to do it. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you do this like you do anything else in this world. It's just like riding a bike. You didn't start off riding a bike at full speed. Or right, you first, the first time you got on a bike, you couldn't hardly balance yourself. You couldn't pedal and steer at the same time. And if it hadn't been for the training wheels, you'd have been tore up. It takes a while. You get started slow. You start off doing what you know. You always start off doing what you know. All right. If you know that you're going to go to the bar on Friday night and you're going to get drunk and you're going to get in sin, don't go to the bar. Start planning on Monday to not go. Start planning on Tuesday to not go. Don't wait till Friday when you're standing in front of the doors and say, I'm not going in. No, sin's too big at that point. You're not going to resist it. You're going to fall. All right, you can't, you can't stand there with the drink in front of you and say, oh, I'm not drinking. No, don't go there. It's easier to resist it when it's way over yonder somewhere. When it's over here in your face, it becomes much harder to resist. Start off with what you know. As you start off resisting the sin that you know, you will get stronger at it. You will get better at it. You will. The Bible says that you can have your senses trained to discern between good and evil, right and wrong. You will get so good at resisting sin, you will scare the devil. Because you will resist sin without actively thinking about it. As you practice and as you grow and as you become more adept at it, you can ride a bike now. Now that you've been riding a bike for years, you get on a bike ride it. You don't even think about it. It just happens. You don't have to worry about pedaling and staring and balance and all that stuff. It just happens. You don't give any active thought to doing that now. Because you have become so adept at it that it's second nature. It doesn't require your focus or your attention to ride that bike anymore. And that's the same way it will be when you get used to resisting sin. As you resist sin, the amount of sin that you can resist gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And before long, the devil won't even be able to tempt you with stuff like this anymore. Before long, you will be resisting sin long before it gets in your face. You'll be resisting it from the other side of town. All right, sin won't be able to get into you. The Bible says to resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will run from you as in terror. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Child of God, you're stronger than what you know. And until next class, God bless you.